In the Gospels of both St. John and St. Luke, we have the account of how the woman, when Jesus was eating at a Pharisee's table amongst his guests, a woman approached him, a woman St. Luke describes simply as a sinner. But St. John identifies her as Mary, the woman who had been possessed by seven demons, who had been exorcised by Christ. And the woman approaches Christ unashamed. She approaches, though he is seated with all these respectable people, the Pharisee and his guests. First of all, we remind ourselves that these seven demons represent to us totality, the totality of vice. We think of how the number seven is associated with God himself, a reminder of his totality, his perfection. And that the devil, of course, 666, the, the Antichrist, is a failure to achieve totality, perfection. So this woman has been possessed in totality by evil and vice. Her sin is known by everybody. It has been seen in the community. She will have been known as a sinner. And yet she approaches bravely, unashamed she approaches Christ because there she recognizes her hope. Only in Christ she knows can she find salvation. And she approaches to kiss his feet, to wash his feet with her tears, to wipe his feet with her hair, to anoint his feet. St. Gregory the Great reminds us that her long hair, the ointments, these would have been the very things that she would have used to beautify herself, to make herself more attractive, to, to enter more deeply into a life of sin and vice. And yet these are the very things that she now offers to Christ, her hair, the ointment. It is a reminder to us that there is no part of ourselves that we must not offer to God. Everything, our whole self, must be given to Christ. Our whole self must be redeemed. When we glorify God, when we approach him and hold nothing back, he is able to change every aspect of our lives. Everything, everything that there is about us must be given to him and offered to him. But of course, as she approaches, the Pharisee who's seated at table not only judges the woman at this moment, but he judges Christ too for accepting her. Christ at that moment has two sinners before him. He has the woman whose sins are public and open, who everybody recognizes as a sinner. But he also has the Pharisee whose, whose sins are inward, whose sins are hidden. His pride, his self-justification, his self-exaltation. The woman finds forgiveness. The Pharisee whose sickness is so deep and so hidden that he cannot even see his sickness does not feel he needs Christ's forgiveness. And so in response, Christ gives them a parable, a parable about how different people are forgiven a debt. And he asks, who will love more? And the Pharisee correctly explains the parable. He says, the man who is forgiven most will love most. He understands with his mind the teaching of Christ. And yet, he cannot apply it to himself. He cannot see his own need of forgiveness. He cannot love because he does not know what is to be forgiven. Every one of us must beware of falling into this trap of the mindset of the Pharisee. Part of being a Christian is to take up the cross of seeing the truth of ourselves. We can hold on to an illusion, an illusion that we can even build into an idol, something we find security in. An illusion of being a good person. We can tell ourselves, well, I don't do that, and I don't do this, and I certainly wouldn't do that. I'm not like those kind of people. Just as the Pharisee at that moment said, I'm not like this woman. Look how I perform my religious duties. Look how I tithe, look how I fast. These religious duties themselves, we can even turn into a new layer of concealment of the truth of who we are, a way of avoiding carrying this cross. And it is a cross to carry because 
it is incredibly painful. It can be terrifying to see the, the true depth of our own vice, the true depth of the darkness within us. But unless we are willing to take up this cross and willing to see beyond the illusion, see into the truth of who we are and what we have done to ourselves, we will not know our debt, we will not know what we need to be forgiven, and we will not find forgiveness. And therefore we will not love God. It is a cross we must lift and carry in order to truly love God. Not only is it very painful, but it can bring us many tears. The woman shed her tears and washed Christ's feet. His feet, whenever we read of Christ's feet, very often it is an image reminding us of his incarnation, that he walked the earth. He became a human being. So she washed his feet, she accepted, recognized Christ there. But the Pharisee, though he proclaimed a belief in God, could not accept Christ incarnate. We must ask ourselves, what kind of God is this that he would believe exists as transcendent, uninvolved, but does not come, does not enter into the world and become incarnate? It is almost worse than no God at all to believe in such a, a separate, uninvolved God. The woman washes his feet, the very feet that he walks this earth. This God who is incarnate, who has entered into this world to confront the depths and darkness. We do not lift our cross simply to endure who we are or simply to endure the cross. We lift our cross and see the truth of ourselves that we may change, that we may be transformed, that Christ will heal us if we bring the very depths and truth of this heart, this dark heart within us to Christ, his light may change us. He comes to be one of us that this change may happen. He comes because of his love for us. But we must believe in a God who is truly incarnate. It is a frightful thing to imagine such a God so transcendent that he wants nothing to be involved with us. St. Gregory the Great says, yes, we must, we must reject all sin and vice, but we must be compassionate with the human being before us. When we see other people who are sinning, let us not be like the Pharisee and simply judge them and reject them. Let us try to find compassion for the human being who is falling into the sickness of sin. Let us recognize our own sin in this person. That we are no different. That our heart is not only capable, but is equally full of vice and sin before God. It is a fellow human being who is equally as sick as us. Let us be compassionate as we hope that God will be compassionate with us. Because when we seek his forgiveness, when we repent and reveal ourselves, and openly acknowledge the darkness of ourselves to God. Like the woman whose tears washed his feet, God will use our tears of repentance to wash our very soul.